So, um, so I'm going to start by mentioning um, a publication called um, Artistic Research Methods and Practices from 2005. And in this um, publication, which is by Hanura et al., um, they, there's, um, these are the researchers who are writing this book highlight the uncertainty surrounding artistic research because its, its results are hard to evaluate. Its contribution to scientific or academic knowledge remains questionable and problematic. So, so in this paper, I'm going to try and draw on the work of Deleuze and Guattari to validate this supposedly questionable notion of artistic research. And um, I'm going to try and deploy concepts like uh, becoming and rhizomatics and meta-modeling to show that artistic knowledge isn't problematic, but on the contrary, it can sometimes uh, question the legitimacy of academic knowledge. So um, these concepts um, that I'm going to mention are obviously extensible and non-hierarchical, and so they're the perfect tools for, in many ways, for um, exploring the indeterminate field of artistic research. And that, which is what I'm going to try and show in the three examples that I'm going to give. And, and I just want to add, actually, before I start, that um, in the beginning I felt like this was uh, almost a kind of assignment, you know, um, uh, trying to impose these concepts on the works. But, um, but in fact, I, I now feel, having done this um, assignment, so to speak, I feel that um, in some cases, the, there are actually predispositions in this direction from the artist that, whose work I'm going to describe. And then in other cases, it also this exercise seems to offer new perspectives that um, resolve certain anomalies in the way these um, works are perceived. So, um, <clears throat> so the first... Um, so the first work I'm going to mention is, um, uh, actually I don't have any images, but I, I don't think, I do, but we can't show them, but I, I don't think that's really a problem. So the first work I'm going to mention is um, Esther Shalev Geltz, who's, um, who had a research project called Trust and the Unfolding Dialogue, which is a research project that was carried out between 2010 and 2013, in which the artists reflected, uh, I quote, on the infinite movement between trust and forms of dialogue generated by and explored through my art. End of quote. So the terms trust and dialogue are particularly relevant to the artist's work. In um, um, a work of hers called uh, Does Your Image Reflect Me from 2002, for instance, um, this artist, Esther Scheid Gertz, invited two elderly women to explore, to share the stories of their lives. And one was a German woman who lived only 40 kilometers from the Bergen Belsen concentration camp during World War II, while the other was a Polish Jewish woman who survived her stay in concentration camp. And uh, Shalom Geltz began by filming each woman recounting her life story, well, before, during, and after the war. And then she filmed each of them witnessing the other's accounts. And so, so the work, um, in fact, when it was presented at the Sprengel Museum in Hanover, consisted of four screens. And so there were the videos of the women telling the story, which were placed side by side, and opposite them, um, there were the videos of the other woman listening. And um, so th there, there, there is actually um, quite a large um, focus on trust in this work, because I, I just want to quote something that a fellow researcher called Annika Wick, a fellow researcher of Charlotte Gertz, has pointed out, I quote, Esther Shalit Gertz's art is full of speech acts, letting the other speak freely, without interruption, is an important parameter in her work. This is made possible 
because of the ways that she provides subjects with a mobility based on a sense of trust, so that there is that so that there are openings and possibilities to move freely and, and freely to an in-between of different spatial positions and personal pronouns. So by inviting participation, trust becomes a core of the work in the sense of building trust, of fostering someone else's um, um, or someone else's narrative of listening, speaking, filming, and giving this whole process space and time. And by using this method in an artistic uh, project within a clear framework and a specific context, dialogues can unfold, end of quote. So, as, as Charlotte Gertz herself makes it clear, trust is, is not just present in the artwork, but also in the art world. Um, the museum trusts the artist by exhibiting his or her work, while the spectator believes that an artwork speaks about itself and the world around us, thereby opening up a space of trust between him or herself and the artwork that allows dialogue to unfold. So, although trust is a word that's rarely used in contemporary art, in the contemporary art milieu, it's nonetheless key in the relations between artists, visitors, and institutions. And the artists also carried out a residency at the Institute of Quality of Government, um, headed by Bo Rothstein, which con conducts and promotes research on trustworthiness and reliability and impartiality in the context of government institutions. So, this is an issue that is also relevant, of course, to art, um, in that it raises the question of the artist's responsibility towards society and, and does also shed new light on the nature and purpose of the artwork itself. But it was really uh, Deleuze's thinking that, provided, um, that provides the most appropriate uh, framework within which to conceptualize um, uh, this particular approach, I, I think. And as uh, another fellow researcher has remarked, uh, I quote, um, uh, Shalit Gertz's work demarcates a sort of map in a Deleuzean and Guattarian sense, end of quote. So, so um, you, you can see from Deleuze and Guattari, because they, they describe a kind of map that, um, I quote from, from, from the Sounds of Plato, that must be produced, um, constructed, a map that's always detachable, connectable, reversible, modifiable, and has multiple entrance ways and exits, end of quote. So, so this map would therefore be capable of exploring interstitial spaces, uh, such as that between the two notions of dialogue and trust. And um, Bauman also stresses the fact that this field is far from stable and embodies a particularly Deleuzean state of becoming as situated between heterogeneous terms and as eschewing any particular goal. So, so these concepts provide a, a kind of theoretical justification and concept for Charlotte Goetz's project and the interstitial form of knowledge that's generated by it, which is a type of knowledge that uh, because it emanates from an artist, is uh, not always taken into account by, by mainstream scholarship. Um, so, her, her research, I, I'd say, is also a rhizomatic, let's say, horizontal and multiply connected and bottom up, as opposed to arborescent or, i.e., hierarchical linear and characterized by segmentation, and so it's capable of highlighting connections that less flexible types of research can't explore. And precisely because it's evolving and indeterminate, it can't be subjected to top-down criticism, which would mean reintroducing an element of hierarchization. And finally, um, Shadow gets his explorations that her testing and probing, so to speak, of the concepts of trust and dialogue, you could compare them almost to Deleuze's method of dramatization, which consists of bringing concepts to life as a means of determining their quality and force. Um, so, so these predispositions um, in 
Shaya Gertz's work are manifest in the text that she wrote to accompany her work, uh, a Nian work called Potential Trust 2014, where she writes, um, and I think here almost every sentence re reflects this kind of engagement with, is, is a sort of parallel or ev evocation of perhaps what Deleuze and Vitaly are there thinking. Um, so she, she writes, engagement by an artist is to transmit what arises and with the utmost attention, a careful and generous listening to the concept should guide the artwork to the um, format that it demands without imposing on a nascent idea further outside thoughts and decisions regarding its realization. The, the potentiality of trust given to this form of creating understanding will allow a multiplicity of perceptions, constructions, connections, hierarchies, dialogues, and could generate a similar reception of the artwork to be passed on to the world where, um, sorry, where the um, uh, where the artist is one of the viewers. So, so for Charlotte Gertz, this research project has been an opportunity to conceptualize and clarify the strategies that she's already been applying to her work for, for years. And in most cases, though, the artist's research is only visible indirectly, in other cases, let's say, embedded, as it were, in the artwork to which it gives rise. So let's take another example, which is the, the Japanese artist uh, Yutaka Makino, whose work engages with a number of key concepts explored by Deleuze and Guattari. So his, for instance, his sound insulation performance um, atmosphere of 2012 explores the, notion, the notions of difference and heterogeneity. And here, um, we have continuously modulating sounds which delineate different sound environments in the gallery space. And um, these um, sound environments exhibit continual differentiation with respect to each other. So they all, they, they askew all reference to an underlying system or score and thereby displaying real difference as opposed to adherence to a norm. Makino's ongoing research into sound and space also resonates with Deleuze and Guattari's distinction between smooth and striated space, the first, of course, being heterogeneous, tactile, and immersive, and the second, homogeneous and unchanging. And Makino's installation, Temporal Object 1 and 2, from 2011, illustrates this difference. Um, because during the first phase of the work, the sounds highlight the acoustic features of the space. And so here, the sounds can be located... Um, excuse me. Uh, the sounds can be located in an unchanging space. Whereas in the second phase of the work, the sounds are, the sounds are immersive and the listener has to construct his own understanding of them without reference to the features of the space. And then finally, he, he's also done a performance called Conflux from 2010, um, which, in which he, he constructs a kind of ecological system that blurs the boundaries between human and non-human. So here we have a room that's gradually filled with streams of hot and cold artificial fog accompanied by different types of sounds. And so, like in an ecological system, the, the visitor, the fog and the sounds interact with their environment and with each other in, in such a way that any movement or change by any of the protagonists in the space, or, or you know, the fog as well, of course, affects the entire system. Uh, so here, too, we, we have multiplicitous, non-hierarchical connections such as those that are defended by Deleuze. And furthermore, fog and sound possess intensive as opposed to extensive properties. Um, because as Deleuze has pointed out, um, intensive variation is indivisible, as in the case of temperature, for instance. 
whereas extensive variation refers to length, area, or volume, which can be divided without bringing about um, a change in kind. So, so in Makino's work, um, I, I'd say that, that Deleuze and Guattari's concepts are not just illustrated or reinterpreted, but offer a framework for grasping his overall approach. And they also help to, to validate, uh, in, in a way, the artistic knowledge um, that they give a framework, a kind of validate, validatory framework for the artistic knowledge generated by his research-based works. And then, uh, finally, I just want to move on to uh, a third example, which is the Welsh artist Bethan Hughes, who carries out in-depth research on Marcel Duchamp's works and writings that um, she either publishes or, um, or incorporates in her artworks and exhibitions. So um, she, her research eschews these, the abstract generalities that are to be found in art historical analyses, and it consists instead of observations based on facts. Uh, she focuses on the gaps and repetitions generated by idioms, homonyms, and catchphrases, so as to reveal the, the very dense network of references and cross-references that she um, perceives in Duchamp's work. And so um, she, she produces page after page of very dense notes that bear witness to these investigations, and each page of notes comprises um, images, sketches, short texts, or even post-it notes with handwritten comments that explore, each of, and each of them explores a particular term or reference. And each page can be read separately and is as important as any other page. And, um, and in, so, so I'd say that in, in her works, in, in her research, um, there is this kind of non-hierarchical aspect that quite, and it's quite open-ended because uh, she studies these individual details that it's up to the viewer to connect or not. And on the other hand though, it's more than a standard piece of research because over and above incorporating these very numerous scattered references and allusions, whether to theology, mythology, or philology, it necessitates um, also personal engagement and non-normative thinking. And so as such, I'd say that it bears more of a resemblance to art constituting, and it, it's also, in fact, you know, when it's exhibited in an exhibition space, it really constitutes to all intents and purposes, a work of art in itself. But then, these are, there's also the relationship to research, which is interesting, because these very exhaustive investigations and meticulous cross-referencing themselves are a form of research, and they're questioning the boundaries between artistic and scholarly art historical um, uh, research. So, I'd say that depending on the point of view, her work can be considered either as research or as art, and that it highlights the parallels and similarities between the two terms. And by privileging, and at the same time, it privileges neither one nor the other. So, in this respect, you could say that it, it evokes this concept of meta modeling that Guattari develops in schizo analytic cartographies uh, as a means of putting in resonance diverse models without favoring any one of them. Um, or perhaps as, as Erin Manning has pointed out in the anthology Non-Representational Methodologies, I quote, a meta-model for Guattari was a proposition that would upset existing formations of power and knowledge, challenging the tendency of models um, and, and this last little bit is Erin Manning quoting from Murphy and Lenosco. Um, operate largely by exclusion and reduction, tightly circumscribing their applications and contact with heterogeneity. So, so Bethan Hughes's 
of research or art also challenges the existing formations of artistic and research-based knowledge and their tendency to reduction and exclusion. And furthermore, um, according to Guattari, uh, this is a quote that we can find in the Guattari reader, um, meta-modeling appropriates um, existing models to construct new cartographies and reference points of its own. And I think Bethan Hughes' project does this too because it borrows um, from both art and research to fashion an uncategorizable entity that enters into new connections and relations of its own. Uh, so, to, so perhaps I'll just very quickly sum up as a, a conclusion. Sorry? Two minutes, okay. Uh, so to sum up, <laughs> my first example highlights the activity of, um, of artistic research itself, whereas the second one focuses, uh, the, the Japanese artist focuses on its results, and the third, which is Bethan Hughes, amalgamates the research with the artwork. And despite their differences though, I think these three types of research have at least one feature in common, which is they all draw on the, on the concepts of Deleuze and Guattari to challenge the boundaries between artistic and academic knowledge. And they also give some kind of meaning to this uh, kind of purposive indeterminacy, um, which, is, uh, character, which characterizes artistic research. Thank you. without mentioning Deleuze, actually, because they, they have a kind of logic of their own that perhaps opposes other ways of looking at art. So I think you can almost use them without mentioning them. And, um, and I think, how would I, how would I convince some that non Well, um, I think by simply trying to show, like I'm going to try to do, that they can resolve certain difficulties of how to perceive these works, like for instance in the last example where, where the work is kind of at the same time art and research, an artwork and research, it's quite hard to conceptualise and the people who, who perhaps consider it as art are, um, uh, you know, I mean a lot of researchers are actually quite um, uh, um, academic researchers when they see this work are actually very quite shocked and they don't believe that it can be part of, you know, proper, so to speak, research. So, so I think the way I would try to convince somebody else the, uh, <laughs> would be to um, emphasize those aspects, you know, how it's actually um, helping us to perhaps see this work in another light, you know, rather than just researchers who say, no, this is, this is actually no good, it's done by an artist, uh, we're not going to consider it. Perhaps here we have a way of showing that it's um, that it's as valid, you know, um, which I think it is. <laughs>